going on guys welcome to another video brought to you by the simple engineer uh, today we are going to be overviewing a basic research project that I had just recently completed dealing with algorithm efficiency uh, combined with the idea of statistical analysis um, and analyze, uh, analyzing um, the efficiencies between bubble sort and selection sort given a set of data um, so if you're watching this, I'm assuming you have knowledge of the two sorting algorithms. However, if you don't bubble sort, basically you start at this index of the list and you would compare these values and swap them. Then you would go to the next, you would compare these values. And if the one on the right is larger than the left, then you would perform a swap, etc. And you would continue this comparison until it reaches the end. And then you go back to the beginning and do the same thing until the entire list is sorted. Uh, selection sort works a little bit differently. You start at the initial index spot and you find the next minimum value and you swap. And then you increase or increment the index value, let's say i um, plus one to the next spot, which would be say two. And then we go through the list and find the next smallest value. Um, so let's just do an example here. We'd start at seven and we go through and search the list for the smallest value and we would see that it's one. So we perform this swap. And then we would ignore the uh, index that we just swapped with increment and we would take two and we'd say, okay, what's the next smallest value of two? There isn't one. So then we'll increment I and then we'll say, okay, now it's seven and we'll find that the next smallest value is six and we would swap that with seven and so on and so forth until we would get a completely sorted list. So. Um, sometimes bubble sort is faster and sometimes selection sort is faster. Um, it's subjective to the data sets that you are sorting and we are going to analyze whether or not one or the other is statistically significant given various sets of data. So um, what I've done is I've constructed a um, series of programs to help um, do this data analysis for us. The first one being is um, a program that basically generates random sets of data and outputs that data in the columns of an Excel spreadsheet. So we have a thousand sets of numbers, 650, 450, 100, 700, 500, 342, 2000, 777, and 10,000 numbers that are randomly generated and inserted into the columns of various um, Excel data spreadsheets. Um, in addition to that, we have the selection sorting algorithm here. And this basically reads the data from each of those um, Excel spreadsheet files, performs a selection sort on that data. It then outputs that following data into a finished time segment. So every time each array is sorted, that time requirement is outputted into a final computation file uh, for the selection sort. Finally, um, we have the print data and this will print all the data that we gather uh, just to verify. And in addition, we have the bubble sort, which does the same as the selection sort. However, it uses that other algorithm. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to command into this file so what I initially want to do is generate this uh, some new sets of data that we can use to measure I'm gonna go ahead and delete this old data used for testing so here I want to generate 10 different files of numerous digits so we can perform the different sorting mechanisms on all the sets of data. And to do that, like I said, I have that algorithm that generates random data. So if we look in this folder after I hit enter, we should have 10 new spreadsheets, which we do now. And this is various data. And if we uh, go ahead and open up one of these you can see that we just have various numbers here that were outputted by the program.
Okay, so now we want to run the sorting algorithms on the following and see their uh, output times. So what we have here is the program has just taken all of the numbers and concatenated them together. And it goes through the numerical sequence of numbers and it performs the uh, bubble sorting algorithm for array one and outputs this time into an Excel spreadsheet. And then we have the total time added up at the bottom. Clearly you can see that the number with uh, the array with 10,000 digits takes the most amount of time coming in at 0 0.309764 seconds to sort all 10,000 digits, uh, which is relatively quick when you think about it. Um, however, if you look at the one with only 100 digits, it does it in just a fraction of a second uh, with 3.5 times 10 to the negative fifth, uh, which is extremely quick. Um, then we go ahead and look at selection sort and we see that the uh, time is, is lower um, and you can see here this is 0.3 and this is 0.1 so you can you can already tell that selection sort looks faster on paper but what we want to do is do a statistical analysis to see if there is a significant difference um, ran at a 95% confidence interval um, and we'll go ahead and, and take a look at the, the mathematics that run behind understanding whether or not it's significantly faster or not and uh, we'll come to some interesting results. So the way that we want to do this is um, this program that I had built is designed to output the times of each algorithm. So if I go ahead and open up the following. So we have our bubble sort times here and we have our selection sort times here. And just to make things easy, I'm going to concatenate these two files. So if we take our selection sorting times and our bubble sorting times, So now we have the following times for each of the arrays respectively and we want to we want to cal calculate whether or not there's a statistical difference between the time computations of each sorting algorithm between the various sets of data. So there are numerous ways to do this. Uh, I prefer to use the Texas Instruments um, student software to perform this data measurement. Uh, what I'm going to do is just copy these various sets of data and we are going to pre um, perform a single t-test on the mean difference of the two. So we're going to go B minus A and this calculates the difference between the two sets of data. Um, one thing to notice is this copies as a string so we do need to fix this. The negative 5 and 3.5 times Okay, so now we have our numerical outputs and we want to perform a t-test. So we're going to go stat test and t-test on the data. And what we are testing is um, that they are going to be equal or one, um, we are going to say bubble sort is going to take a greater amount of time. And this is going to be outputted. And we're going to do this on the correct column. Okay, so getting this outputted value, we'll go ahead and copy this into Excel so it's easier to read. Okay, so we have our summary statistical analysis in front of us. And what we have is we have this t-test statistic, which tells us how many standard deviations from the mean are we as well as a p-value and these calculations are done um, the same way you can do it by hand and that's 
using these formulas. So the T test stat is done with the D bar average, which is the summation of all the values divided by um, the number of data sets you used. And this D bar, this D sub I value is taken by the difference of the two data sets. And that gives us 0 0.018. And then we need to calculate the standard deviation of the data sets, which is given by the following formula. And that would give you the test stat. And with the test stat, you can then find the p-value. And the p-value is um, the most important because that's what finalizes our idea of understanding whether or not um, bubble sort is significantly slower than selection sort. Because judging by this data output, you can see that bubble sort takes a longer time. However, we are using an alpha value of 0 0.05. So keep in mind, alpha, alpha equals 0 0.05. And because our p value is 0 0.31, you can see that it's much higher than alpha. And by the principles of statistics, any time that a p value is higher than the given alpha value, then you fail to reject the null hypothesis. And our null hypothesis was that these um, sorting algorithms uh, complete the data sets within the same amount of time um, within this 0.05 alpha value. Thus proving that there is no statistical time difference between solving these two algorithms. And although it looks like bubble sort is slower, when you look at this um, at a, a statistically significant level, it does this so fast that it is it doesn't matter. And if we were to throw in a data set of maybe a billion numbers or uh, uh, 30 million numbers, there may be a slight significance. Then you're, you're increasing the data sets, you're changing the p-value, and with that information, the p-value could decrease um, significantly when you increase the size of the data sets because those numbers are inversely proportional. So that sums up the idea of uh, bubble sort and selection sort algorithmic efficiency comparison um, for a statistical analysis on the computation times. If you guys have any questions about this simple research project on algorithms, feel free to send me a link uh, or a message. And if you're interested in any of the code that I've written to calculate this data, I'd be more than happy to share it with you. Thanks for watching.